Today, we'll be exploring three key areas impacted by the upcoming Bitcoin halving. First, we'll delve into the halving itself, what it is, and its historical context. Next, we'll examine the challenge it poses to miners and how they're preparing for it. Finally, we'll discuss the significant on-chain activity spurred by ordinal inscriptions, including their contribution to transaction fees for miners and the implications of ETF flows for Bitcoin's market structure post-halving. Hi, my name is Michael Zhao. I'm a research associate at Grayscale Investments. So what is the Bitcoin halving? The Bitcoin halving is an event embedded in Bitcoin's protocol that reduces the reward for mining new blocks by half. This occurs approximately every four years. This mechanism is designed to create scarcity by limiting the new supply of Bitcoin, mirroring the scarcity of precious metals. The next halving in April 2024 will decrease the block reward from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. So historically, halvings have been associated with price increases, but it's important to note that these are not solely due to the halvings themselves. Past price surges around halvings have coincided with significant macroeconomic events, such as the European debt crisis in 2012, the 2017 ICO boom, and the expansive stimulus measures during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. These events could have highlighted Bitcoin's potential as an alternative source of value amidst economic uncertainty contributing to its price appreciation. This underscores that while the halving contributes to Bitcoin's scarcity narrative, broader economic contexts and investor behavior also play critical roles in the market dynamics. So here's what the halving looks like from the miner perspective. The halving poses a challenge for miners by having their block reward income, which is a significant part of their revenue. In anticipation, miners have been diversifying their income sources and optimizing operations. For example, they've engaged in fundraising through equity and debt issuances, and selling Bitcoin reserves to ensure they remain operational and secure post having. So while the short term might be slightly challenging for miners, many have already been preparing months in advance. Eventually, we believe miners will stabilize like they have done in the past. In terms of fundamental on-chain activity, ordinal inscriptions have brought a new layer of activity to the Bitcoin blockchain. These are essentially NFT-like collectibles inscribed directly onto Satoshis, which is the smallest unit of Bitcoin. Since their introduction, over 59 million assets have been inscribed, which have generated more than $200 million in transaction fees for miners. This surge in activity not only benefits miners financially, but also showcases the Bitcoin network's capacity for supporting innovative use cases beyond just transferring Bitcoin. Now that we have spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US, these ETFs will create more access in general by providing regulated and accessible avenue for institutional and retail investment in Bitcoin. The demand or buy pressure coming from ETFs has the potential to absorb some of the potential sell pressure from mining issuance, creating a more balanced or even supply-constrained market structure. For example, the initial net flows into US spot Bitcoin ETFs post-approval amounted to approximately 1.5 billion in just 15 trading days. While the initial influx might be due to pent-up demand, if we assume that ETFs will eventually provide a steady demand source, ETF flows could offset the sell pressure from mining. In essence, the interplay between Reduced Bitcoin issuance due to the halving and increased demand from ETF inflows presents an interesting dynamic. It suggests that while the halving reduces supply growth, ETFs can contribute to demand growth. This potentially leads to more favorable supply-demand balance and could potentially support Bitcoin's long-term value appreciation. For more information on this topic, as well as other research topics, please visit grayscale.com. Thanks so much for listening.